Hi, welcome to my channel, Math Made Easy with Laurel. I'm Laurel, and in this video, we're going to continue our discussion of rim and face alignment. In the previous video, I talked about the math formulas used in determining the amount of shims needed under the front legs and the amount of shims needed under the back legs to correct both the angular and offset misalignment all in one fell swoop. In this video, we're going to talk about the dial indicators that are used to determine the information about the misalignment, and then we'll continue with the formulas we've looked at already. So remember, we're doing vertical alignment. It means that we want to make sure that the center line of the fixed machine is in alignment with the center line of the movable or the machine to be shimmed. And when we're doing the rim and face method, it means we're taking our dial indicator and we're doing a face reading and a rim reading to get our information. The face reading will tell us about the angular misalignment. The rim reading will tell us about the offset misalignment. So you need to understand what a positive or negative reading on a dial indicator means. Basically, if the reading is positive, it means the plunger is being pushed in. And if the reading is negative, the plunger is being released. This diagram shows a typical setup for rim and face where this shaft is our fixed machine and this is our movable or our machine to be shimmed. We mount our dial indicator on the fixed shaft and then we have a dial indicator on the inside face of the movable coupling and then we have a dial indicator on the rim of the movable coupling. So the two pieces of information that we get from those dials will tell us the amount of angular misalignment and the amount of offset misalignment. Let's take a look at some examples. So in my rough drawing, this represents the shaft of the fixed machine and here's the shaft of the movable or the machine to be shimmed. We need to know the diameter and the diameter represents the diameter formed by the dial indicator. So just be aware of that. We need to know the distance from the movable coupling to the front legs and from the front legs to the back legs. So what we're going to do first is a face reading and that reading is going to be on the inside face of the movable coupling. We're going to zero our dial at 12 o'clock. We're going to rotate 180 degrees and we're going to take a reading of positive 12. And we need to understand what that means. So if we're rotating around and the plunger is being pushed in, that means that the gap is 12 thousandths of an inch wider at the top because it's pushing the plunger in so it's closer at the bottom. Now we're going to do a rim reading. When you're doing a rim reading, you're going to have to account for dial sag before you start and adjust your dial for that. Again, the dial indicator is mounted on the fixed shaft. We're going to zero our dial at 12 o'clock. We're going to rotate 180 degrees. And let's say our reading says positive 80. So if our dial is down here and the plunger is being pushed in, that means that this coupling is lower than this coupling. However, a rim reading will always tell you double what the actual offset is. So the offset isn't 80 thousandths, the offset is actually 40 thousandths. So we need to divide this by two. So that, that tells us that the machine to be shimmed is actually 40 thousandths lower. Don't forget to divide your rim dial reading by two. Face reading, you take at face value. Now that we know those two pieces of information, we can continue the way that we did in the last video. So we've drawn the fixed shaft and we want to draw the movable shaft in relation to that. So we know at the coupling that the machine to be shimmed is 40 thousandths lower. We know that the gap is wider at the top so we know that that shaft is sloping downward like that. So again, 
if we find this amount and add it to 40 thousandths, we find this amount and add it to 40 thousandths, we will know exactly what shims are needed under the front legs and the back legs. In order to find those amounts, I need to determine slope. We know that the slope is the gap difference divided by the diameter. That gap difference is 12 thousandths divided by the diameter of five inches. So the slope is 0 0.0024 inches per inch. Keep the value that you get on your calculator, don't round it off, because when you multiply this by those lengths, if you did round it off, you're gonna create more error. Now to find the front shims, I take that slope, and I multiply that by the distance from the movable coupling to the front legs, which is six inches. And then I add to that the offset at the movable coupling. So what this tells me is the amount it drops and that 40 thousandths is that amount. When I add those two together, I get this total amount. When I multiply that, I get 0 0.0144, which is 0 0.0544. Usually you're gonna round off to the nearest thousandth of an inch. Therefore, this is just going to be 54 thousandths. So you're gonna put 54 thousandths under your front legs. We do the same process to find the shims under the back legs, except we use the distance from the coupling to the back legs. So I take the slope and I multiply by the distance from the coupling to the back legs, because that's gonna tell me how much it'll drop over that distance of 24 inches. And when I multiply that together, I get 0 0.0576. So that represents this amount, but I still have this offset amount of 40 thousandths. So when I add this together, I get 0 0.0976. Again, we're probably gonna round off to the nearest thousandth. So I'm gonna round that up to 98. We have now calculated the total shims required to fix both the angular and offset misalignment. Our face reading tells us about the angular misalignment. Our rim reading tells us about the offset misalignment. Let's do one more example, but this time let's do an example where the gap between the couplings is wider at the bottom. In our next example, we have a face reading of negative 12 thousandths. Again, we're mounting that dial indicator on the fixed shaft and we are taking a reading on the inside face of the movable coupling. So if it's zeroed at 12 o'clock and reads negative 12,000, that means the plunger is going out, which means it's wider at the bottom. So that means that the gap is 12 thousandths of an inch wider at the bottom. So that tells us our angular misalignment and we can use that value to find slope. So we know that slope will equal, it's negative when it's wider at the bottom. So it's negative 12 thousandths of an inch over a diameter of five inches. So it's negative 0 0.0024 inches per inch. So when the gap is wider at the bottom, it's a negative slope. When the gap is wider at the top, it's a positive slope. Then we take a rim reading. Again, it's mounted on the fixed shaft. We zero at 12 o'clock, it reads positive 150 thousandths. We divide that by two, and that tells us that the machine to be shimmed is 75 thousandths. If it's positive, it's pushing the plunger in, so this is lower, so the machine to be shimmed is 75 thousandths lower. Let's make a drawing. We're keeping our same dimensions for A and B of six inches and 18 inches. We know initially at the coupling, the machine to be shimmed is 75 thousandths lower. But because the gap is wider at the bottom, it's sloping upwards. So we know that it's going to be less than 75 thousandths low there and less than 75 thousandths low there. That's why we're using a negative slope. You may have learned about negative and positive slopes in high school, and this goes counter to what you were taught then. So 
when I'm talking about positive and negative slopes, I'm talking about it in terms of alignment. We're going to use that slope to find out how much higher the center line is at that point and that point. And then with the offset, we can find the actual, we can find these actual values. We use the same formula. We take the slope and we multiply, if we're doing the front legs, we multiply by the distance to the front legs, which is six inches. We add to that the offset, the original offset. We get negative 0 0.0144. We add 75 to that. This amount represents how much it comes up. So when we combine those, we get 0 0.0606. We're going to round that off to the nearest thousandth of an inch. So under the front feet, we need 61 thousandths. We basically took 75 and subtracted this amount here. We do the same thing for the back legs. The only difference is instead of using a distance of 6 inches, I use this total distance of 24 inches. So the slope times 24 inches plus the offset of 75 thousandths. When I multiply these, I get 0 0.0576 inches plus 75 thousandths, which equals 0 0.0174. We're going to round off to the nearest thousandth of an inch. So we would need 17 thousandths shims under the back feet. This number told us how much higher it was here. And then we take that away from the 75 to get this amount of 17 thousandths. So we're going to need 61 thousandths shims under the front feet. 17,000 shims under the back feet, and we will have corrected both angular and offset misalignment. There is another one-step method, and in the next two videos, I'm gonna talk about it, and it's called cross dial. It's basically the same process, it's just the way we get the information. With rim and face, we do a face reading and a rim reading on our movable coupling. With cross dial, we do two rim readings across from each other. One will be on the fixed coupling and one will be on the movable coupling. But the technique is very similar to what we're doing with rim and face.